misery to be part of that supremacist apartheid state that exists at the moment. Can you imagine the misery of living like that? So we're for them. We want, we want them to be liberated from the situation they find themselves in. As much as I've got to speak about the consistency of such a form, but this is, this is bipartisan in the, in the way that a lot of people would believe it is. I was sitting here just now, though, and I confess I wasn't worrying about them and their hurt feelings or their whatever it might be. I was actually thinking, here we are, we're sitting in this beautiful, warm room, surrounded by a lot of beautiful, warm people, having a, by and large, good conversation about something that we all care about. In Gaza, they're dying. As we sit here, they are dying. And this is something that we, I, could, I cannot let go of when, when I'm sitting here in this cozy chair. And I'm not going to get a glass of cheap white wine in about 10 minutes. Well, so, you know, this is, the, the, the situation is beyond the most desperate thing that any of us could ever imagine. I care deeply about the people of Syria. We love the people of Syria. And the Rohingyas. We care about all oppressed people all over the world. So I'd like to, I would like to answer the question. I would like to answer the question. Yeah. Everybody here knows what my position is on. The Syrian people, all oppressed people need to be liberated from dictatorships. Yeah. So, the question, UJ, that you asked, um, unfortunately, doesn't actually always come from the right place. We gotta, we gotta, it wasn't people who were really concerned about a panel that was pro peace or pro Israel or pro anything, really. It's actually a little more sinister than that. The question really is more about I am not a whole human being. And our positions come from people who are so dehumanized that in fact, in order for my opinion, for my truth to be whole, it needs to be validated by my oppressor. And so, if you want to hear another position that you did not hear on the stage today, you have the right to organize a panel yep. with those other voices that you want to hear. There have been many opportunities and moments and platforms where those who have the position that would be perceived to be pro-Israel and anti-Palestinian have had more platforms than any of us in this room could ever afford. And so I am as a member of a marginalized community with a marginalized voice for far too long. But it's a new day and a new era, and we will no longer be marginalized. And what, what people are going to have to come to terms with, that if you in this country want to fight for social justice, and you want to come to the quote, social justice movement, when you get there, Palestine will be at the table. very clearly in the beginning. This should never be, I should never have to be in any space in America fighting for my right to speak about anything. We should have, and I came here today for a very specific reason, to do justice for the Palestinian people. I want the Palestinian people to know that there are Palestinians, generations of Palestinians in the diaspora that will never forget where we came from. That will never forget the blood that runs through our veins. And that we are here with a responsibility to keep Palestine alive. Because the opposition wants nothing more than for us as Palestinians born in the diaspora to forget. But I will tell you right now, we will never forget. And our children and great, great grandchildren will never forget until there is a free and liberated Palestine. Thank you.